is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today we are back with a brand new and historical wwe action figure review because today we are finally reviewing the wwe elite series 100 wave from mattel this is a set that is a long time coming one that was hyped beyond beyond comprehension to be honest with you i was pretty disappointed in it when we first got it revealed to us pretty underwhelming set however we finally have it in hand i can finally make my final judgments on it i can unbox every single figure we can take ourselves all the way through it i thought some of the talents in here the choices for this wave were kind of underwhelming like i stated i went on social media on all my different accounts twitter instagram all the different places i even made multiple videos videos about it on my YouTube channel about my full thoughts on WWE Elite 100, but here it is in its entirety, man. This has to be congratulatory to Mattel. Everything that they have done over the years to get to Elite 100, I know we we obviously have way more Elite Waves than just 100 when you include the pay-per-views and the Build-A-Figure sets and the store exclusives and all the craziness, but they finally reached the 100 mark in their WWE main Elite line, and it is truly unbelievable, man. I'm so excited to be here. Here reviewing this wave for you. Of course, this set does include John Cena, Andre the Giant, The Rock, Stunning Steve Austin, Becky Lynch, and Rey Mysterio. We do have a lot of reuse in this set. However, every single figure in this set does feature a brand new first time in the line championship belt for our action figures. We got some brand new head sculpts in this wave, some unique things going on. I'm pretty excited for it. Now, coming into Elite 100, when I could see it on the horizon, maybe around like Elite 80 something, Elite 90 something, I was looking into the future and I was like, you know what? Elite 100 probably going to be the culmination of a hundred waves of WWE action figures. They're going to take the guys that have sort of carried Mattel and the brand through their first 100 series or through this entire 100 series of figures and they kind of did that they kind of not did that but uh, we're going to dive into it man. I'm excited for it. But before we get them out of the packaging let's go ahead and take a look at this packaging and you guys will see that the main boxes are in a black color you do have like the silver foil at the top with the black series 100 which is a cool feature. Honestly maybe Maybe the Series 100 should have been a gold foil. I think that would have been a nice contrast between the two. You could have seen it a lot better. But you have the white Elite Collection logo. Not the best packaging ever, but it is slightly different than the, the other packaging. You got the WWE logo, of course. The front viewing talent there. Their names at the bottom in the black and silver. On the sides, all of them feature their silhouettes or their portraits. They do seem to be created or illustrated. They're not, you know, actual photos. They are illustrations of the talent. And they do have, like, a cool background picture piece in there and I do believe that every single figure does include original artwork by Jonathan Bartlett and it even has his signature on the back of the packaging featured with the art that is on the inside of the box which is really cool but in this wave like I said we have Andre the Giant, Rey Mysterio, The Rock, Becky Lynch, John Cena and Stunning Steve Austin. All these figures look pretty good mint on card. A bit of reuse here and there of course we're going to get into all those different things man but with all that being said man let's go ahead and crack these guys out of their packaging take a closer look at their accessories and find out what the hell these guys are all about. Alright man, so here's WWE Elite Series 100 out of their packaging all here. Rey Mysterio, Becky Lynch, The Rock, Stunning Steve, John Cena and Andre the Giant. I definitely have my gripes with each individual figure. I don't know, may maybe one figure's flawless. If you want my honest about it, if I'm being completely honest, if you injected truth serum into my neck, I probably would say one figure's perfect or closest to perfect but I'm excited to dive into this wave man. I mean, we have been waiting so long on this wave. Lots of hype, lots of great championships in this wave. First time in the championships that we've seen here, which I think is going to add the most value to the set if I haven't said it before. I think that the championships is what's going to make this set worth it and what makes this set valuable in the long run and what people are searching after in this wave because championships in the Mattel line, bro, they skyrocket in the secondary market, especially if they're hard to come by. I mean, they'll go more they'll go for more than figures sometimes. I mean, I've seen championships go for 50 bucks. Just a single WWE Mattel action figure belt. Nonetheless, man, we're going to go one by one through each individual figure, dive into their accessories, and we're going to cover the full wave in this video, man. Let's break down my thoughts on every single figure individually, and we're going to roll through every single one and find out what the hell WWE Elite Series 100 is all about. All right, guys, so getting into Stunning Steve's accessories, starting out first, we do have this cloth robe that I am a massive fan of. I think it looks really, really good. Now, I didn't watch Stunning Steve back then because I wasn't alive. However, on the back, I love that you have, like, this pattern here. It's got SS for Stunning Steve. You got these, like, stars and polka dots and you got the belt 
of the robe going through that can tie. It can't come out though, so that helps it there, but you do have the loop. It's got the red color. It fits the figure well. The cuffs look nice. I mean, this is a very quality accessory, and it looks good on the figure, so I'm all for cloth goods. It really doesn't matter who the freaking talent is. Now, getting into the rest of his accessories, we do have a brand new championship here. This is the NWA Television Heavyweight Wrestling Championship, or the, you know, the NWA TV title, or whatever the hell you want to call it here. Now, it's supposed to say NWA up there at the top, but it does not, but the plates look really good. I like the red color and everything. There was a black version with a red, you know, backing here on the back of the strap, and I don't know why they didn't go with the black version, because every photo I see of Stunning Steve with this championship and the things I've seen, he had the black and red version, so I don't know what they were going for there, or what, maybe they just wanted to make the, the you know, the more throwback version, or what, whatever the case is there, but it does look really good. I like the plates. The shimmer is nice. This is very quality, and you guys know that every title in this Elite set, first of all, every figure comes with a title, and every figure comes with a first time in the line title, so this is pretty cool and epic, but I like it, you know, it is what it is, I guess, you know, maybe you can get a decal right there for NWA, maybe from Curb Stomp or something, but I like this accessory. And then what would the world be without our trusty Mike Holding Hands, and our trusty Ricochet Kawhi Leonard handshaking entrance, handshaking style hands, which can do all kinds of different things. Handshake, slap somebody in the face, hands on the hips, you know, all the different things. All right, guys, so getting into Stunning Steve himself, starting out with the head sculpt, I have a mixed bag on this one, man. It's, I can almost, like, see the likeness, but I almost feel like it gets lost somewhere, and I'm not a big fan of the head sculpt, and it, it reminds me of Steve Austin, but it's just not fully captured. I really can't place it. I, I don't know what it is exactly, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I just don't like it that much for whatever reason. I don't know if it's like the nose is a little fat or something. I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of it. I can see the likeness. I can see what they were going for. I'm just not a fan of it there. I think I would have preferred like the hair down or something, but you know it is what it is. I like the blonde color. I like that, you know, going on. Yeah, basically the Stone Cold Steve Austin torso. I think that works for him. I've always enjoyed that. He's got the double jointed arms on there. Standard with the white wrist tape. He does have this nice colorful gear on here. I looked up images of this gear specifically and I don't think, I don't know if this is accurate or not. Unless he had a couple of different versions which he may have. I saw a version of this that was a little different. Like the colors were like this pink was red and this like green was yellow. And maybe I just had it wrong, but I like the tights. They look good and toyetic and all that different stuff with the coloration and stuff. Very cool looking on it. I like that. Got the beefy thighs on there. He's on ball joints. He's got the standard knee pads, white boots to go around. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's your stunning Steve, man. I think the accessories and the trunks really sell this figure. I'm not completely sure if, you know, the rest of it does the deal for me. It's kind of plain Jane, you know. I don't know how well this is going to do at retail. The Ringmaster figure didn't sell particularly well, but it was more boring than this. I will give it that. You know, it's not the exact same as the Ringmaster, but it's not Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, if I had that Legends Polly Dangerously, I would absolutely have put it up next to the Stunning Steve. However, we do have the Elite 81 Stunning Steve over here, and I do like this figure better. I think the head sculpt's got more likeness to it. Looks like this guy's maybe a tad bit taller there, but yeah, I, you know, it's just, they're playing Jane. I, I like this figure overall better, I think. Just head sculpt. I know it's single jointed arms, but this gear's probably better, but I like the boot over here. I like the head sculpt more. This does have a robe and stuff, but, you know, it's it's apples to oranges, but it's kind of it's kinda apples. It's kind of like a green apple and a red apple, maybe. I don't know. But this isn't bad. You know, I like it. It's just kind of plain Jane, but again, I wish I had the Poly Dangerously Legends Elite. I'd put it up here to, to measure and see what we got going on, but I didn't want to compare these, and I do... I used to have the Ringmaster, but I got rid of the Ringmaster because I thought the figure was so boring. I'll probably grab it at one juncture later, but I did sell that figure off, like, five years ago or four years ago or something like that, but yeah, they're stunning Steve Football Austin. So getting into the Rock's accessories, I think, you know, I guess it's pretty much the exact same. You may get a little bit more here or there, but you lose the, the, the amount of cloth, I guess you could say, but the gym has got to be our first time in the line Brahma Bull Championship for the Rock. You know, this is like his custom WWF Championship here. Very badass. I mean, unbelievable, man. I always liked the Brahma Bull Championship. I always loved the Smoking Skull title. Like, all these different championships I have always been a fan of, and this looks great, man. I, I think it looks terrific. The Brahma Bull looks great. It feels fantastic. Even the details in the strap back there. Got the rock on the side plates, the rock over here. I mean, dude, this is a quality looking Mattel belt. This is probably one of the best looking Mattel WWE action figure championships they've made to date, and I'm here for it. I've been waiting on this one, and I'm finally glad to have this in the collection. Gonna have to definitely track this down more, and hopefully they'll include this later down the line, or maybe they won't. Maybe this will make Elite 100 very sought after just simply for the championship 
groups alone. Now, outside of that, we did get the Rock jersey. Now, this is very interesting to note, is that you guys know we did get the jersey in the Top Talents line with the Top Talents Rock, but it was in the red and white and silver. Well, this was the one that was more common. He wore the blue one more commonly, and he's got the Brahma Bull, the Rock there. It's got the number one on the side right there. You got the stripes. Very quality football jersey. You know, the merch was going nuts back then. Man, I went to a live event the other day. Like, not a live event, but I went to Monday Night Raw in Birmingham, Alabama the other day. The merch stand was completely shitty. And I remember back when I was a kid, bro, the merch stand used to be lit as hell. It would have 30 different options for every god dang superstar. Now there's like seven shirts up there. Like, what the hell were we doing? I, I didn't like it. I thought it was very boring. I don't know, man. It just it, it doesn't go like it used to, man. But I guess, you know, merch is a lot different now. But on the back it is Velcro. It doesn't have a back graphic or anything. But I still like the, the jersey. It's still badass. It looks good on the figure. It's supposed to be oversized. It looks well. I, I'm all for it. We also get glasses that we have seen multiple times. It's the gold glasses with the black frames in there. I got a little paint chip on mine a little bit. It looks like a sticker almost. It might be. I don't know. Nonetheless, they look pretty good. I think they get the job done. I don't have any issues with that. And after that, you do have your mic holding hands on the rock skin tone. You have the fisted hands, which are very, very common. And just like Stunning Steve, he comes with his own Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hands shaking bitch slap hands. So you can bitch slap some monkey ass jabronis. Alright guys, so getting into the rock figure, not a big fan of this head sculpt either, man. I'm just, I don't know. I just don't like the likeness. I, I think it's a bit of an odd choice. When you think of The Rock from this era, I don't think of him smiling like this, and I know that, you know, they, they it's like, well, we've done the piss off head, we've done the yelling expression, we've done these things, we've done the people's eyebrow head sculpt, and I get that, but I still think a grumpy people's eyebrow head sculpt with this haircut and, you know, side uh, sideburns and all this different stuff would still be better, even if you had to reuse the ultimate head sculpts, which they still really haven't done, I think that would be much better than this. I just don't really care for this head sculpt. It looks like him. I like the sculpt of the hair and the sideburns. I just, I don't know. It just doesn't fit the era to, for me. And it doesn't completely nail it just 100%. So, you know, both of these head sculpts on these figures are kind of a miss. But I do love the formula. I like the, the rock torso of the game here. It's the Austin torso. I like that they gave him the striated, like, deltoid shoulders here. I think that really completes it. Gives him a more ripped up look. Got the Brahma Bull tattoo with the double jointed arms. I like the elbow pads on there. Standard trunks with the rock in the red. I think he didn't wear this gear until the early 2000s, though. I want to say that this is like a mismatch of different, like, around the same time frame, you know, for the rock, but they kind of mix and match there. You do have the Brahma Bull in the back in the red, which is also nice. I think a metallic look would have been really cool if they could have made it metallic, but yeah, you got the standard rock thighs, black knee pads, and then he does have his signature rock boots, which are very solid. And again, man, I don't hate the figure. I just, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a standard rock. We just got the Top Talents rock. We had the Rock and Sock Connection 2 pack. We had the Greatest Hits rock, which I think is probably better than this figure. But, you know, it is what it is. But uh, let's get into some rock figure comparisons. And for our rock figure comparisons, guys, we do have sort of a fix-up rock here with the Top Talents jersey. We have the Top Talents figure itself without the jersey on. So it is like the blue and silver, which I really like. That has the, the Rock and Sock Connection 2 pack head sculpt, I think. I don't think that's the Top Talents head. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think it is. We have the Elite 100 here, and then we do have the Rock and Sock Connection 2-pack Elite Rock with a different head sculpt on there. So it's just a mismatch of rocks. I actually have quite the collection of kind of, you know, different fix-up rocks and stuff. And I'm all for it. I do love the rock. I think that he's, you know, he's probably top 10 maybe all-time on my personal list. He may be top 15 all-time. Always enjoyed the rock's work. An Elite Rock that I really want is maybe sculpted jogging pants, shirtless with the white team just bring it, and sneakers with that WrestleMania head sculpt that we got on his Elite, and maybe a big gold championship or something like that. That's kind of like the rock that I'd really like to see. But, you know, at this juncture, it is what it is. You know, it's it's just, you know, this is basically this top talent's rock. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not that much different. I know we got the same jersey, just different color. We did get the Brahma Bull Championship, which is a huge upgrade, but I think they're really selling this wave with the championships. They didn't really focus on the figures. They focused on getting us these championships. All right, guys, so getting into Elite 100 John Cena's accessories. I mean, we're lacking a little bit here, but you do get some quality things. All right, so about the championship belt, a lot of interesting 
interesting points right here. Cut this one lamp off to try and help with the lighting here. I feel like the exposure is a little bit too high here. However, on the championship, you guys will see, this is a center plate we've seen before. Now, I do believe they just used the rated R. Well, maybe not, because I think there was like a thing on the back of the rated R championship, but it does spin. Mine's a bit stuck, though, to be honest with you. It, it spun a little bit, but now it's like locked up, and I don't know really, I don't really know how to get that unstuck. You guys can see it like twirl just a little bit there. Yeah, it's honestly getting stuck there, but you guys see that it does, you can spin it. You just have to like, well, mine's like really tight actually, but I felt like the rated R one was super loose, which was way better, but yeah, mine's stuck. Anyways, side plates are inaccurate because this is actually, you guys will notice that it features two WWE Champion side plates, but in 2005, it's supposed to have the Monday Night Raw side plate, and before this championship actually got released, every other WWE Championship that they've given us, including the rated R one, I couldn't find mine, always had the Monday Night Raw side plate like this. And if you even want to go further, they could have made it into a title they've never given us before, and it would have been the WWE Champion side plate and the SmackDown side plate. So it would have had the fist and it would have said SmackDown because when John Cena originally won the championship and switched it over, it had a SmackDown side plate because he was on SmackDown. And then he got switched over to Raw in the draft and he switched it to a Monday Night Raw side plate. So they could have done something new there or they could have kept the Monday Night Raw and then instead they gave us the two WWE champion side plates and I don't think the championship ever had two WWE champion side plates with the spinner gimmick like this. It switched to two WWE champion side plates I think under CM Punk's reign and then when you go to the Elite 20 CM Punk championship, the championship that came with Elite 20 Punk, it had the Monday Night Raw side plates. When I'm pretty sure every time he ever held the belt it was the WWE champion side plates. So it's just a whole bunch of rigmarole. Doesn't really matter. Not really. But it's, it's definitely worth noting there. But they could have put the SmackDown one there and that would have been accurate. Outside of that, he also comes with a hat. Now, this is the Ultimate Edition Cena hat. It is the Chain Gang hat here. We have seen this hat from Mattel before in the Defining Moments line with the first Defining Moments Draft Lottery Cena from 2005. And that is this OG right here. And you guys are going to notice that the new one is not accurate. Now, these thick white stripes, I don't really know where they got that from. It's more of like thin with like some kind of light gray in the middle. And this one's kind of more accurate, but one thing that gets on my nerves about this one is they put C Nation on the back of this Chain Gang hat when it's supposed to say Chain Gang Life Sentence, like it says here. This one, the Defining Moments hat, is actually accurate. This one is not. He didn't start using that logo until 08, I believe. So, again, just sort of a mismatch there. I, I mean, I guess you could just leave it, but, you know, being Elite 100 and wanting to be super accurate would have been nice to get that Chain Gang Life Sentence on there. And this one also looks better to me because it has the white holes on there which is accurate and this one doesn't have any white holes on it so it just looks a bit weird with the thick stripes and stuff but you know what i'm still gonna use it I'll, you know i'll get i'll get away with it now we also have the chain gang pendant here would have been much better as a loose chain or a workable chain but this is the same exact chain gang chain that came with his first defining moments figure as well and then cena also comes with interchangeable hands you have the mic holding hands and of course the infamous you can't see me hands or five knuckle shuffle hands or you know there's a few different you know different variations of the hands but you get it. So getting into John Cena's figure itself, man, this does look to be a brand new head sculpt. It's not ringing any bells for me as far as any previous John Cena head sculpts, but I feel like it almost doesn't really look like a 2005 era of John Cena. I'm getting more of like a 2010, 2011, you know, 2012, somewhere in their version of Cena. I'm not really getting the 2005 version. Like, I feel like the hair isn't quite accurate, like that kind of boxy military haircut. Like, it's still there, but it's not as accurate as I would might like, but it's still a really good good head sculpt. I think we're going to see this head sculpt moving forward on a lot of John Cena figures. I won't be shocked if we see this head sculpt maybe 10 more times before the year's over with basics and elites and ultimates and anything else we get. We have the giant jack torso for Cena as always. Massive arms. We got the chain gang bands, of course, which are great. And then they actually got this accurate with the word life arm band or the WWE logo band, whatever you want to say there. He also has the word life, you know, underwear or undershorts, sliding shorts, whatever the hell you want to call those, compression shorts. And then you do have the light jorts that we have seen so many damn times, man. I mean, it is time to retire this shorts mold. We have seen it since Elite Series 3, and I mean, my God, I like the light blue jean look and the jorts and the knee pads and all this stuff down here. I'm not getting any skin tone chipping, which is nice, but this shoe mold, man, my God, can we please get a new shoe mold? Just Jesus Christ, can we please get a new shoe mold? We've seen it over a decade, man. Pun intended. We have seen it enough. We've seen enough. Come on, Brad. Nonetheless, I love 
John Cena. I do like this figure. I think it works as a great standalone Cena. I think if you put some cloth goods on there and fix him up nice, he's gonna be looking very fire. Also, I may get a chain gang tattoo, bro. Don't attempt me, man. Like, just a solid CG with that reticle on there. Don't attempt me, bro. Do not attempt me. But for this John Cena, articulation's basically the same. Not gonna get into that. However, I am gonna get into these god dang figure comparisons. So for your Cena figure comparisons, you have the Elite 3 Cena, which is the first Elite Cena we got. You have the last main Elite line Cena that we've gotten so far, and then you have his second Ultimate here. Of course, there's plenty more Cenas you could throw up here, but he's kind of embody everything we've seen from Cena. I know they can't really give him the ultimate shoes. Like, I get that, but damn, man, it's the same shorts mold. Look at this. Same torso, same shorts, same molds all the way down. The only thing they changed is that this isn't the same now. They got rid of that little ankle piece for the rotation, but it's still the same exact shoe mold. Same exact shoe mold. It's garbage. They fall over. It's time for something new, man. It is time for something new. We've seen the shoe mold on so many different Cenas, and it is time to go. It is time to go. Let's get something new in here. Let's get something fresh. I would have loved... That's kind of what makes this also disappointing because it's Elite 100. They could have went all out and changed some different molds. I mean, even this Cena Ultimate has the same shorts mold. They did change the shoe mold, thank God. But yeah, I just... I think the hair's just a little bit too curly looking. I feel like it should be more straight like this one over here. But yeah, there's your Cena figure comparisons. We've come a long way, man, in a 100 series. You got the Elite 3, the Elite 100. I mean, that is nuts. And you have an Ultimate which would absolutely poo on this figure back in the day between all the different goods. But just to see the advances they've made and the improvements, it's just fantastic. But this is the only thing holding their figures back, man. Fix that ish. So getting into Andre the Giant's accessories, let's start off first. We do have this necklace here or this cross necklace. And this is actually supposed to be Hulk Hogan's, I do believe. So you got the cross there. We've seen this multiple times with all the damn Hogan figures we've gotten this year. But I do believe this is supposed to be from 1987, which would be accurate with this championship and this look of Andre the Giant from the Piper's Pit interview segment or WWE segment that took place in 1987. It was Piper's Pit with Hogan and Andre and Heenan and Andre basically ripped the chain off, ripped his shirt off and it was like a whole big thing there. And then this first time in the line championship here with the long blue strap and the massive plates. It's got World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion here with the gold and the blue. It looks very fantastic. This is actually Andre's WWE title from 1987. 87 that they were going to gift him. It was personally created, a personally created WWE Championship specifically for Andre the Giant, and it would have been presented to him had he won the WWE title at WrestleMania 3 in 1987. It was shown on one episode of WWE Primetime, actually, and they pretty much showed it off just to show the sheer size of the championship itself. You know, it really never got a real run as the established championship, but it is very sick that Mattel gave us this. I think that's amazing. I, like, that is truly incredible that they did that, and I think it's awesome. You got the dual plated like silver and gold. Very, very clean and epic. And then outside of that, we actually have brand new sized hands for our Andre figures. These are not the same as we got with his last Elite, you know, that like Elite 60 or whatever it was, like the giant machine. We have these choke slamming hands. We have these fisted hands, and these are actually not the same exact size. This is the Andre the Giant Elite hand, and then we have a regular size hand. So they are actually sizably bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not, you know, these hands are like gigantic but they're definitely bigger than the average hand so now we should hopefully be getting these hands with guys like Brock Lesnar guys like Braun Strowman things like that make those hands bigger because it makes the figure a lot more accurate and then for another size comparison you also get pointer fingers and this is another pointer finger uh, let's get the same side here so you guys can see so you guys can see there it is another bigger hand for Andre which makes sense I'm glad they got that attention to detail we've been waiting on sizable hands I know we've gotten it in the past and on rare occasions but that is all of your Elite Series 100 Andre the Giant figure accessories. All right, guys, so getting into this Elite 100 Andre the Giant figure, man, I'm having so much fun. For some reason, this head sculpt looks so familiar to me, and I don't know why. Have we seen this before? I feel like we haven't seen it before, but it looks so familiar to me, so it won't be shocking if, it, if we have seen it before. I know it's not the Elite 60. It's not that, like, WrestleMania, you know, like, entrance greats deal with the, the ring that bring, you know, the ring cart or whatever the hell it was. I want to say it may have been the the hall of fame four pack or something i could be wrong though you know or maybe one of those figures but going down into this torso brand new figure from the neck down i mean it is beautiful with these beautiful sleeves double jointed arms with like the plaid pattern going on i don't know why i said pattern like that i don't know what the hell i'm talking about pattern going down you have this nicely sculpted shirt in here like the 
salmon color. Very, very clean looking. I do believe this is based off the Piper's Pit segment from 1987 with Hulk Hogan. Got the nice navy jeans in here, navy belt, newly sculpted legs, jeans. They do have pins in there, which is actually shocking, which makes me think these aren't newly sculpted, but they I feel like they are. And then you just have regular booted feet there for Andre, but my lord in heaven, man, this figure is freaking buttery smooth. I mean, dude, look at how, like, it's not loose at all. It feels so clean. You get the double jointed in here. He can move around fantastic. Decent little ab crunch in there. Flappy jacket. Ball joints here. Upper thigh cut. Double jointed knee. You don't have lower leg swivel, which would be very, very nice, but you know what? We'll, we'll breathe with it because this figure is so damn good in the hand, but this Andre the Giant is the best Andre the Giant. I know it's very unique. You know, it's not your typical Andre the Giant, but oh my god, man. It just feels so good. It's undeniable. Some figures you just can't deny, and this one is undeniable. It feels so good in the hand. Go buy it right now. Oh, hell no. Now, I did sell my Hall of Fame four-pack Andre way back in the day, but here's that basic figure I was talking about. You know, it's got like the true effects head sculpt on there, and then here is the giant machine Andre, and you know, we've had our share of Andres over the years. We had, what, another main elite line with a Toys R Us exclusive. We had the Hall of Fame four-pack. I think we had a Legends Andre. You got the Elite 100 Andre, the Chase. You got this giant machine. I mean, we've had our share of Andres, man, but these are pretty damn nice. I think this is my favorite one ever. I need to track down the rest of them, of course, for the collection, but Andre figures are legendary, man, and that's just the, the bottom line. Now, for a couple more Andre the Giant figure comparisons for the Elite 100, we do have the new Build-A-Figure Mean Gene, and these are not the same sleeved arms. These are newly sculpted, like, gigantic sleeve arms. I don't know how we're gonna get you reuse out of this. Maybe an Omos in suit or something is what I would guess. I, I don't have any damn clue what we're gonna do there. However, actually, now that I look at it, bro, this might be Omos, uh, an Omos crotch, possibly? I, I can't tell right off the cuff, but then you have Hulk Hogan up next to him. I thought was pretty cool, even though this is more of an earlier Hogan than this specific Andre. You get the point there, but it is cool to see these all up next to each other. I think it's badass, and uh, this Andre the Giant will absolutely attack you in your sleep like the Ultimate Edition Ronda Rouse. All right, guys, so getting into Becky Lynch's accessories starting out, let's get into the rubber jacket. Now, why I hate rubber accessories, I actually like the sculpt of this a lot. It's got a lot of texture on it. It's like the beads or the little mini spikes. I think they're just beads or um, buttons all over it. It looks good. It's quality. It feels nice. It's just, it's a, you know, it's, it's kind of a flimsy rubber. It's a little tougher, actually. You're not bending the arms in this. It's not like hard AF plastic, but it's still not, you're not gonna bend the arms. You know what I mean? I'd rather have cloth or just don't include it. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, these do nothing for me personally, but maybe you enjoy this, but yeah, there's the rubber jacket. It's, you know, it's, it, it, it exists. I can say that. Next up is the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, we do have to get the other one in here, but this one looks so much better, man. The gold really accents well. I think this looks so much more quality. You know, you look at the old championships we used to get, and you compare them to the new one, and you're like, how could they get better than this? And then they do, and it's just wild how that, that happens. Like, this is what I'm talking about. The bottom one is the pre-existing one, and look at it. It looks so good. You're like, how can you get better than that? But then you look at this, you're like, oh, damn, that, that is better. So it's smaller, more compact. It's got more details in it. It has the red detailed jewels. It's got the gold outline on the WWE logo. It's better, man. It, it simply is better, and it looks so much more accurate and quality. I love this. They did a fantastic job on it. I'm glad we actually got this, and now, th I mean, I, I can retire this. What do I need this for? You know what I mean? This one is immaculate, and I hope that we get, you know, we're obviously going to get more of these, but this is very, very sick. A a like, an outstanding job on this. I guess the next step will be adding side plates or custom side plates, but this is a great championship. Outside of that, you do get your fisted hands. You know, the women's fisted hands, they are smaller, to be more accurate. And then she also comes with mic-holding hands, which always make the world go round. You know, the C-grips or the mic-holding hands or... Yeah. All right, guys, so getting into Becky Lynch, this head sculpt is is not it. I can see a little bit of likeness, but I think it's something to do with the eyes. I, I really don't know exactly what it is. I really do like the hair sculpt, though, how it's like... I don't know, it almost reminds me of like Avatar or something. How it's got like the braid going all the way down. You got like the long locks here. Very good there. I just, I don't know. I feel like the head sculpt just looks a bit odd, you know? And I think everybody's there with it. It's like it has likeness to Becky Lynch, but it's not all the way there. And it just kind of gets lost. It's almost like she has big eyes. And it's just, I, I don't know, man. Becky Lynch is somebody they have always really struggled with. They got her likeness right in Elite 72. And then they've had some basics that look solid. But this one, you know, it's just, it's not that great. I do love this 
this newly sculpted upper torso. I like the top and everything like that. Mine's a bit loose though, I will say. Like, look at that. I'm barely moving it and it goes. So that's that's a bit disappointing. But I like it. You know, my shoulders aren't stuck, which is a huge bonus. I do have the side gauntlets here in the white, which look really great. You know, I love the gear. I think the gear is the best part of the figure, to be honest. Very tight waist. I like the gray stripes and everything. Like, this is a very cool gear. I like it a lot. You got the double jointed arms in there. Upper thigh cut. You got the fish netting. The white knee pads. This is something that I hate, though. These white kick pads. Or not the white kick pads. Just the sculpt, man. They always give these women's figures basic kick pads. What is that? Can we get some newly sculpted kick pads? Is it because they've tried like tooling new feet and they're like, they can't stand up? But when you flat foot this thing, she ends up being like bow legged a little bit and then her feet aren't completely flat on the ground. And when she does a, you know, if you spread her feet wide, her feet can't go, you know, flat on the ground because there's no ankle pivot on these basic boots. And then she ends up looking dumb. Also, I just looked at it. These red stripes on the kick pads are completely random, but. So here's what I'm talking about about the Becky Lynch. You guys can see her feet are a little bit spread apart and this foot is not completely flat on the ground it just looks odd and she looks bow-legged so that's something that always happens on these women's figures because she doesn't have ankle pivot because they're not elite kick pads they're basic kick pads so that's what we end up with so that's something there but the articulation solid my arm again goes up all the way and down all the way she has the double jointed arms in there double bicep swivel like the figure feels solid besides that like kind of upper torso looseness but like she could pose around great knee pads kind of get in the way there and you know she's got kick pad rotation it's just I wish she had elite boots and that upper torso is a bit loose, but I like the figure I just god like the gear looks great I think if you head swapped it But let's get into some figure comparisons and then I may head swap it just to look see what it looks like So for your Becky Lynch figure comparisons here is the elite 85 on the left You have the elite 100 here And then this is the ultimate edition fix up that I did that honestly like her legs are so loose here because I ended up switching the legs Like look at this right here, but it's still this is probably my favorite looking Becky in my collection I just like the head sculpt and the way the the buns there and the Ultimate Edition arms. Like, I love this. But I feel like if you put this head sculpt, this may actually not pop off, actually. Now that I thought about it, yeah, this actually won't pop off. How shitty. Well, if you put this head sculpt, I want to say I have another one of these head sculpts. This is from a basic Becky. I think this is the best Becky Lynch head sculpt they've ever done. I think if you took that head sculpt and put it on the Elite 100, it would look a hell of a lot better. I still like this Becky the most, even though the legs are loose. I need to fix that at some date, some later date. I just, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta tighten that up. But yeah, I, I still like like the Elite 100, I think it's quality, but yeah, they gotta give her a new formula, man. I mean, look at this right here. Like, see, last time this was painted, this time it's sculpted, and then she still has the basic boots down here that just, it continues, man. God. Anyways, that's your Becky Lynch figure comparisons. Alright, guys, so getting into Rey Mysterio's accessories. I mean, it's all about the championship, man. Very bare bones accessories, but we do get the WCW Cruiserweight Championship here, and it does look very quality. I don't have, like, a ton of issues with the size. I think it is pretty quality quality size you guys can see you got wcw on there very quality you know this is better than coming with the wwe cruiserweight championship right that they used to do man they pumped out a couple of those with they did that a couple times giving us that modern cruiserweight championship but this is still fire you got the wcw on the, on the side plates this is very nice i'm very glad to finally add this to the collection i think this is going to be a pretty highly sought after championship in the wwe elite aftermarket so we will have to you know uh, play that by ear and see but this is very nice and then outside of that man he comes with the oversized ass hand so he comes with regular sized Rey Mysterio hands here for uh he gets mic holding and fists which you're not going to use these or you shouldn't use these with your Rey because they're way too big they look like clown hands you know there's clown shoes these look like clown hands because they're way too damn big on his on his body they're not proportionate at all and they look stupid so you know I don't know why they can't fix that we've seen that multiple times it's been 30 series they still can't do it if he if he doesn't have gloved hands he's going to come with over Oversized hands. It's like a prerequisite in the WWE Mattel Elite action figure creation process. It's like they cannot just go in and custom add hands to the to the thing. It's kind of wild. It's almost like a formula thing. I, I don't even get it. But yeah, these are these are definitely not going on my ray. I'm gonna find some smaller hands. You have a few different options. You may be able to use Sasha hands from Elite 83. Actually, let me grab that. All right, so here's Sasha Bank hands, and uh, yeah, if you compare these, they're very close in skin tone. If they're not the exact same skin tone so i'm just gonna plop one of these into the ray and then the other one so i'm gonna take one big hand and one small hand and then plug those into the ray so you guys can see here now will these be too small they may be too small you know 
that, that may be a thing, but I think I'd rather them be too small than too massive. So let's plop this in here. That's just way better, bro. Like that looks so much more accurate. So there's that. And then you have this hand. So there is your comparison. For me, I like the, t I like the tiny hands better. That's just me. You know, what do I know? Those, the, the hand on the right is definitely way too big. But yeah, there's you an option. Should work, uh, I think. You know, I guess the, at least it's it's a placeholder until I can think of a different formula. All right, man, so getting into Rey Mysterio at the head sculpt, I almost feel like he's, like, slumped a little bit, isn't he? Like, I feel like, I don't know, like, he almost feels a little stumpy or something like that, but I guess not. It's not terrible. I want to say this is a newly sculpted head sculpt. It doesn't look like it, but I want to say it is. I want to say, like, last time, I don't know. I, I'd have to look at it, but I want to say this is new, and uh, if it is new, it's very hard to tell that it's new, but the, the paints look okay. I want to say, like, this color on the attire in person i guess it is a little bit more volt looking and it is supposed to be a, like a volt color but going down to the torso same torso we've seen from ray this is before he had all the tattoos obviously so we're not going to see all those i hate that this uh this right here how the paint deco why couldn't they include newly sculpted like bicep bands they've given it to us so many times i know they're obviously not as modern they're a throwback but that would have really made it man like having it painted on the shoulder right there is kind of odd because when you turn it obviously the the point of the cross is still right there so that's kind of annoying but you do have the bicep bands on there you got the tattoos again a kind of an odd choice but you know we're dealing with 20 25 buck retail figures but at the same time they've done it in the past so you do have the gauntlets on the sides we've seen these before with the elite 32 ray and before i think it was the elite 72 as well but they look good you got the volt color on the crotch and the you know like the different pieces here this green here is a lot more green than this this is like almost i guess like a riddler green and then this is more of like a volt looking color like a yellowish greenish volt color and then you have the red and the white pretty cool stuff also forgot to mention they do have like the stitching on the back of the mask which is very quality feels good you can feel like the stitches on there that's a nice detail as well figure does feel immaculate and he also has these new boots i think these are newly sculpted i don't think he had these on his elite 32 figure so these are new but i mean the figure feels fantastic as they always do if you're in a competition say you're an action figure and you're in a competition with a Rey Mysterio figure and the competition happens to be how good you feel in the hand you're probably effed okay I mean that's that's kind of how I feel about it I mean he just feels like he can just do it all you know what I mean he's not loose he's very compact he feels good he has oversized hands he looks a bit stumpy in the neck shoulder area but overall the quality and the feel of the figure is by far some of the best that Mattel made all right guys so for your Rey Mysterio figure comparisons I wanted to go with like this torso with these kind of legs kind of looks I don't have the Elite 32 Ray. Every time I've had it, I've turned into a custom. That's been twice now, I think, so I do need to get that back in the collection. But you have the Elite 72. I said that this had the sculpted gauntlets from Elite 72. The figure that I was thinking of was the Elite 67 Ray, so I do apologize for that. But here's the Elite 67 Ray, which is also WCW. You have the Elite 100, the Legends, and the Top Talents over here. So, of course, we've had many others. You've had the Elite 69 Ray, a couple more Top Talents, the Elite 92. I mean, there's so many damn Ray Mysterios. I didn't want to put them all up here but these are kind of very similar i wish i had the elite 32 to compare but yeah i mean putting all the gloved hands on these makes it more proportionate you guys can see the oversized hands here but it just looks a bit stumpy in the neck am i wrong about that like it's the head sits too low maybe i mean it needs to be up a little bit but i would love to see a maskless wcw ray highly doubt that ever happens i i mean i guess it could happen but i would be shocked i'd be shocked if they went with that but it would still be very dope but ray mysterio what a goat just an absolute unit very very sick but yeah they're gonna keep giving them to us uh, uh, Rey Mysterio what a baller very toyetic unlimited gears unlimited mask options I mean this guy does it all and uh here we are with another example I love you know this elite 100 not my favorite uh you know a little bit plain Jane but you do get the WCW Cruiserweight Championship so that is our full WWE Elite Series 100 man I think I need to still do a My Damn Thoughts episode on this because you of course in that show or in that episode not that show I guess technically it is a show but in that we'll go into all the details i'll tell you guys my favorite head sculpt from the set we'll rank the set from worst to best i'll give you my uh, you know more in-depth analysis of it my favorite accessory from the set best head sculpt worst head sculpt best articulation all those different things will come into play but overall elite series 100 we finally have it man now i can finally start putting some effort and some thought into ranking wwe elite series 1 through 100 from worst to best like the set in itself where will series 100 rank 
that'll be interesting for sure. I don't know if it'll crack the top 10, just off the top of my brain, but I guess anything's possible. I mean, I really enjoy the figures. I think the titles are really unique, but uh, outside of the championships and maybe one or two figures, kind of bare bones, you know? That, I mean, that's kind of what we're getting here. I would expect this set to hit retail probably around March or April. You know, I think Elite 95 is the most recent set to hit retail. Still waiting on, I think a, a couple people have found Elite 96, I think, but you know, you have Elite 97, 98, 99, so I would probably say March or April will probably be the about the time this hits retail, mass retail. That'll probably be when I get my men on cards set, all those different things, man, but that is going to wrap up the My Damn Toys complete set review of Elite Series 100. I did do individual two-in-one reviews before this massive all-in-one review of every single figure, but I just kind of wanted to do that just so it would be up and somebody could watch the full wave if they wanted to, the full in-depth analysis of every single figure in this wave if they wanted to, so that is available for everybody, but I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts on this wave down in the comment section below. Do you think it's epic? Do you think it's eh? Leave me all those thoughts down in the comment section below, but I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. I will see you guys in the next video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you next time, and have a blessed one. You'll never